In the mystery of Christmas, the Blessed Mother who pondered what she witnessed in her heart understood better than anyone the generosity of God. He had poured himself out, continues to pour himself out, as the Blessed Apostle Paul tells us today in the letter to Titus. He has poured forth upon us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. He has given us regeneration and renovation in the Holy Ghost by his pouring out what elsewhere St. Paul in the letter to the Philippians will call his emptying, his kenosis. He emptied himself and took the form of a slave, being born in the likeness of men. And it is in this way that he has redeemed us. And we know in doctrine of the church and Catholic theology that this is not only something that our Lord has done for us in the past, it's something that he continues to do for us. And he does it not simply at a distance, but within us, the kingdom of God is within us. He's poured himself out and given us his life. And what we celebrate, what we solemnize in Christmas and in the images that we use in the crash is something that we experience internally, hopefully, through the grace of God and through his power. And so the world still says that it's better to give than to receive. And we speak about the spirit of Christmas and hopefully how people's hearts sometimes will change around the season. Unfortunately, it doesn't last very long, but still we, we recognize the truth of the mystery that God's generosity can overcome all things and that somehow we need to enter into that generosity. We also need to empty ourselves. We need to witness what the Lord has done for us and like our Blessed Mother, ponder this mystery in our heart. Our Lord poured himself out into her. He emptied himself and took the form of a slave. He did not spurn the virgin's womb, but he came, became her child. And she gave him to the world, trying to uh, imitate his self-emptying by offering her only begotten son, her treasure to the whole world, to the shepherds, to the magi, and even in a certain sense to, to Herod and all the rest of them that hated him. Our Lord was vulnerable and a victim even from the beginning. And again, these are mysteries that as Our Lady pondered them in her heart, we are to assimilate in our life. We look at the image on the outside and more importantly, we assimilate that image sacramentally in the Eucharist and in the other sacraments and Hopefully, we live them. This was the ideal of our Holy Father, St. Francis, who in his rule said, we become heirs of the kingdom of, of heaven because we are poor in earthly goods, but rich in the gifts of heaven. And that this is, this poverty of Jesus is something that we should desire more than anything else under the sun. And we shouldn't allow anyone to dissuade us from living this poverty. St. Francis' devotion to Lady Poverty and to the um, hardships and austerity of physical poverty was ultimately an understanding of the mystery of Bethlehem and the mystery of our Lord's uh, outpouring. And it wasn't, it, you know, the external observances of St. Francis of his you know, poor uh, habit in the form of the cross and having nowhere, no place to, to lay his head as our Lord was, yes, an external imitation of the poverty of Bethlehem. But more than importantly, the whole spirituality of St. Francis and 
all the exter external observances of our, of our Holy Father was a, um, an all-out war against egoism, against selfishness, against uh, preoccupation with ourselves. Our Holy Father Francis poured himself out like Jesus for the good of the church. He forgot himself and chose the way of poverty as our Lord had for the good of souls. And so it is better to give than to receive and it's a lesson that we learn in a big way at Christmas time but it's one that our Lord demonstrates for us every day of our lives uh, through his grace and especially through the Eucharist. Our Lord is poor in the Eucharist even though he is the giver of all good things, even though he is rich with his divine nature. He pours himself out and humbles himself and takes the form of a slave and then even hides that nature of a slave under the form of bread and wine, under the form of even an inanimate object, under the form of food, so that we might receive him, receive his poverty and become rich in his poverty. So let us meditate on these things with our Blessed Mother, pondering them in our heart and, and, being, and, and become awed and humbled by the poverty of Jesus Christ and his generosity that we might learn to forget ourselves and pour our, ourselves out for him and for those he, he poured himself out for so that in his poverty we might become rich.